Hi, George here. And we're going to be talking about using the lasso tool. Now, there are three basic lasso tools. First off, the tool is right over here, right below the move tool. And then down in the options, you have the regular lasso, you have the polygonal lasso, and you also have the magnetic lasso. Let me show you when I use these three different tools and how I use them. But first, the additional options over here. These all make a selection, and you can make a new selection or add to an existing selection or subtract from an existing selection or do an overlap of sections and use the intersection. Sometimes that's useful, but I rarely use that one. Anti-aliasing just means that it's going to be smoothing down any curves, so I always have that left checked. Feathering means you're going to be getting a soft edge on your selection. I normally leave this at zero. And refine edge allows you to kind of clean things up here and so forth. We'll be taking a look at this in just a second. Let's start off with how I use the freehand lasso tool. Now, the problem with the freehand lasso tool is because it is a freehand tool, it tends to be a bit sloppy. It's hard to get a real clean edge using this tool. I can show you why. I'm just make a new blank file right there. This is the default Photoshop elements size. Control zero to make that full screen. And I'll just draw just kind of a freehand shape in here. If I'm using the mouse, notice how it's pretty jagged. It's pretty rough in here. Really hard to make a clean circle using this tool because it's just the way the mouse works is a bit sloppy. So you can't get a good, tight, concise selection with this tool, but it's good at grabbing just big areas. Let's see how that works. I'm just going to deselect that. We'll go back here. And I'll normally use this tool if I plan on using this in conjunction with the Refine Edge tool. So I'll use this to make my basic selection. Then I'll use Refine Edge to clean that selection up. And here's how I do that. I'll just come in here and I'll make a freehand selection just a little ways outside so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not trying to be exact on this one. Just want to get just a nice little selection like that. There we go, just around the bottom side here. And then back up around this side. I won't bother with that strap for the purse for this demonstration. So you can see this selection is pretty sloppy, but it doesn't matter because I'll come back in here with the Refined Edge tool and I'll let Photoshop Elements do the real careful edge work. Let me bring my size up here to about twice that size. Make that 70, that looks better. And I'll just brush over the edge here. And Photoshop Elements goes in and finds that edge and gives me a real nice, perfect selection along that edge, especially good along here, things like that. So that's how I would normally use the regular lasso tool, kind of as an in-between tool to make rough selections where I'm planning on going back in and making a better selection using either the refined edge or a different tool. It's very good for that kind of use. I'll just finish this one up here and then we'll see how we did. Again, I'm not going to bother with that strap right there, although this might have caught it. I'll just tap to see. And just like that, there we go. And then we'll output this to a new layer with layer mask, choose OK. And there we go. We've removed that background very quickly, very easily using the regular lasso tool and then the refine edge. Now, sometimes refine edge is not appropriate. A good example for that is over here. Maybe I want to come in and be much more precise and do a hand drawn selection. And this is where I would come in and use the polygonal lasso tool. And because it's hand drawn, I'm going to be zooming in. I'll just show you part of this. Now, with the polygonal lasso tool, the way this works is you click and then you find your next point and click, find your next point and click, and just do that clear around whatever it is that you want to select. And Photoshop Elements goes in and puts in lines between the dots that you're clicking. You just deselect that. And you can do curves this way, but you have to do them in just real small little movements like this. So you come in real tight, real close. The nice thing about this is it can be very, very precise. It takes longer, but you can make it absolutely perfect. Layer mask this way. This is what I normally do if I'm doing something that requires a bit of detail work. I'll come in here by hand and I'll do it very carefully. This also works out well if you have an edge like right down in here where the refined edge wouldn't catch it. It's maybe too soft of an edge or possibly the contrast between the foreground subject and the background isn't enough. Whatever reason, if refined edge wouldn't do it, then I'll come in and I'll use this tool to give me that edge. You can see how easy it is. I just do a click and then put in a little short line or longer lines. I can go a little bit further on that. And then you hold the space bar down to move your image. There we go. And then just keep on going. And you can make real nice, very precise selections this way. 
Again, the problem is that it does take a little bit longer, but if it's important, that's okay. The time spent is well worth it. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and fast forward through this. I'll finish this off, but I'll do it in uh, fast motion so it doesn't take you forever to see this thing. You see me do that, that means I'm moving my mouse on my mouse pad. You made a better spot for that. There we go. And there we go, real nice clean selection as you can see around this. And then I can make a layer mask out of this one. I'm just going to first make a duplicate here, duplicate layer. She's okay, hide the background and then layer mask. And there we go, real nice clean selection. And I only spent actually about two minutes to make that selection, but it's real clean. Even the nice curves, it has a nice curved look because I was making just little movements with the mouse, little spots between my points and then it filled those in. We have a very clean, very controlled selection. And that's how I normally use the polygonal lasso tool when control is the most important thing for me. Okay, our final tool, this is the magnetic lasso, and this will follow edges. And it's a bit of a specialty tool. You have to have a nice clean edge for this to follow, but there is one time I found where this is very useful. We'll go over here. Let's say you have a line drawing like this and you want to remove the background from the line drawing. And I have some stuff in here that's kind of messing things up. This is a great tool for this. Let me just zoom in on this, just like that. And I'll hold the spacebar down and move my image. And then with the magnetic lasso, I'll come up here into the hair someplace. Now notice down here we have width 10 pixels. That's the area that it's looking in. Contrast 10%, you can adjust your contrast level. Frequency is how far apart the dots are placed. So if I go like this, you can see how they're pretty close together in there. If I bring my frequency down a bit, about half of that, see the space further apart. And feathering, of course, softens the edge down. So I'm going to bring my frequency down just a bit more here, maybe about 12. Come up here and then simply follow along on the edge. You don't have to be perfect, but try to be accurate if you can. And then Photoshop Elements will find the actual edge that you're near to and then click the line right to that edge because, of course, it is magnetic that's the whole concept behind the magnetic lasso is that it will come in and find that edge and i'll go through and i'll do this whole one here and i'll show it at high speed so you can see how this goes but it's really very easy to use if you have the right kind of picture now this has real high contrast as you can see between the foreground and the background it's not going to be absolutely perfect you may want to go back in and clean things up afterwards but that's easy enough on layer masks we've done that a lot so if you clean it up on the layer mask part, or if you want to be a bit trickier, you can clean up your selection first and then do it that way. Okay, I'll go ahead now and finish this off and we'll see how it goes. There we go, there's that selection. Let's see how this looks. Again, I'll make a copy of my background here. Duplicate layer. And I'll hide that one and then layer mask. There we go, actually, pretty good. And it saves me a lot of time. I could have done this with the polygonal lasso tool, but this saved me a lot of time. I'll need to come back in and do a little bit of cleanup, right? Like in here, for instance, and get rid of that table leg in there. Some of those things. But it did a very good job here, reasonably quickly. Again, I spent about Two minutes on this, just going around the whole perimeter. So there you go. That's how I use these three different lasso tools down here. And when I find them the most useful. Okay, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe. And I want to give out a special thanks to everybody who is supporting my channel. My channel is 100% fan supported. So if you want to help support my channel, allow me to make more videos like this, then consider either purchasing my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down in the description. Or you can support me through a super thanks tip on one of my videos or also through my Patreon. Again, you'll find a link for that in the description. And I'll see you next time.